This is a list of characters in the Dying Earth series by Jack Vance. The Dying Earth Title characters Guile – Guile of Sphere is a young, wealthy man who is famous among his people for endlessly asking questions, due to a «void» in his mind which compels him to seek knowledge. Eventually, his father grants him magical boons to protect him, so that he can seek the fabled Museum of Man in order to ask questions of the legendary, all-knowing curator. Leanne, a «bandit troubadour», Leanne the Wayfarer, as he calls himself, is a vain, venal, overconfident, sadistic, and thoroughly amoral adventurer. He travels about seeking wealth, wine, women, and song. In order to win the affections of a beautiful witch, he sets out to steal a tapestry from a mysterious entity called Chun the Unavoidable. Mazirian, a greedy and heartless wizard, Mazirian will stop at nothing to obtain as much magical knowledge and power as possible. Although Mazirian, like Turgeon, is capable of creating artificial life, his creations lack human intelligence. He imprisons Turgeon in order to force him to give up his secrets. Turgeon – Turgeon is a wizard who lives in the castle of Miir, where he keeps the books which contain the 100 spells which remain in human knowledge. At the beginning of the book, Turgeon travels to an otherworldly realm to study under the wizard Pandalum, who can teach Turgeon the secret of creating artificial life, as well as spells and sciences which are lost to human knowledge. Turgeon's adventures often bring him into conflict with other wizards. Tissize – Tissize is an artificial woman created by Pandalum. Unfortunately, something went wrong in the process of her creation. As a result, Tissize is literally incapable of being pleased with anything or anyone, and reacts with disgust to the sight, sound, etc. of everything she perceives. She is consumed with uncontrollable disgust and hatred for all living creatures, including herself, and spends her time attempting to hunt and kill everything in sight except Pandalum. After an encounter with Tissane, she decides to attempt to control her instinctual hatred, and asks Pandalum to send her to Earth. There, she joins Etar in an attempt to cure their respective ills. Yulin Dhor, Yulin is the nephew of Prince Kandiv, and a budding swordsman and wizard. He sets out to the city of Ampridatvir to recover a pair of ancient tablets, supposed to provide access to ancient knowledge and magic. <laughs> Other characters Eli – Eli is a girl who shows kindness to Yulin Dhor when he journeys to Ampridatvir. She is a member of the grey-clad worshippers of Kazdal. Yulin informs her of the truth about the city, and she serves as his guide and companion. Etar – Etar is a normal man who was unfortunate enough to fall in love with an evil witch. She used her magic powers to exchange his face with that of a demon, cursing him with an unspeakably horrible face. However, Etar is a kind man. After he offers help and hospitality to Tissize, she joins him on a journey to force his ex-lover to return his face. Although Etar is not spoken of as a magician, he knows some spells which he uses to protect himself and Tissize. Kandiv, Prince Kandiv the Golden, as he is called, is a decadent and indolent monarch who rules the city of Kyan. He is also a wizard of considerable power, from whom Mazirian stole the secrets of unnaturally long life. His age is unknown. Kandiv finances the expeditions of his nephew, Yulin Dhor. Pandalum, Pandalum is a mighty wizard who resides in the realm of Embellion. 
Pandalum possesses knowledge of many things which are otherwise lost to mankind in Turgeon's time, including the method of creating artificial life, of all the spells which have ever been invented, and of mundane sciences such as mathematics. However, he is not perfect or infallible, he created the flawed Tissais and needs Turgeon to retrieve a magical relic for him in order to defeat an old foe. Although he has a physical presence, Pandalum is never seen by the other characters, apparently, the sight of him causes insanity or death. Rogel Domodonfers, the last ruler of the city of Ampridatvir, unable to stop the endless rioting among the people of the city, caught up in a freak religious fervor, is mortally wounded and devises two tablets containing the key to his law. The city, once a bastion of science, sinks into barbarism. Thousands of years later, Yulin Dhor and Etai seek to steal these tablets from the temples. In doing so, they find the surprising true purpose behind their creation. Sheil, Sheil is the daughter of the Castellan of the Saponids. When the Saponids force Guile to choose the most beautiful young woman in Saponce, he chooses Sheil, and inadvertently condemns her to be sacrificed to the demon Blickdale. Guile and Sheil develop a relationship as the Saponids force him to escort her to the Museum of Man. Tisane, Tisane is a beautiful artificial human woman created by Turgeon. Tisane was created from the same pattern that Pandalum used to create Tisai's, but Tisane does not share her mental flaws. Tisane returns with Turgeon to the dying earth, and later attempts to rescue Turgeon from Mazirian. Rialto the Marvelous The most powerful wizards of the 21st aeon of the Dying Earth are banded together in an association, and mostly reside in the territories of Ascalis and Ormery. Unlike other wizards of the Dying Earth, such as Turgeon and Mazirian, these wizards possess nearly godlike power. With little effort, they can travel to the distant past or the furthest reaches of the universe, freeze time a popular dirty trick, prolong their lives for eons, change their shape and appearance, summon useful objects, and call forth numerous spells of protection, destruction, investigation, or simple amusement and experimentation. Much of their power comes from their ability to bind and control potent genie like beings called sandestans, while they also derive power from their large stores of magical relics. The most highly prized are Ioun stones, mystical stones which they take as the spoils of their battles with the archvos. Their conduct toward one another is governed by a set of rules called the Blue Principles, because they are inscribed upon a blue stone which displays them through a sort of projector. This artifact is dislocated back to a remote aeon and the search for it is fraught with one setback after another. In Vance's dying Earth cycle, most magic has been lost, there remaining but few more than a hundred spells to man's access. Each spell has to be memorized by stringent study, and, once used, is forgotten and has to be re-memorized. Even the strongest wizards can memorize but four of the greater and six of the lesser spells. Artifacts of great power from «antique days» occasionally turn up. These restrictions appear to be missing from the Kugel and Rialto cycles. Because the wizards are so powerful, they have little to fear except from one another and from powerful external threats such as the archvos. Thus, while the Blue Principles acts as a non-aggression pact and a defensive alliance, most of the time it serves as a social circle and gentlemen's club. The members spend most of their time enjoying fine food and drink, courting ladies of the nearby kingdoms, conversing, and squabbling with one another over magical relics and pranks played on one another. Rialto the Marvelous, the titular wizard of the last book in the Dying Earth trilogy, and the primary focus of the stories involving the wizards of the 21st aeon. Rialto, like most of the others, is a wealthy and powerful wizard who rules an opulent estate, Falu. 
Also like most of his fellows, he enjoys Epicurean pleasures and the company of beautiful women, but maintains no serious relationships. Normally appearing as a slim man with short black hair and austere features, he earned the title, "...the marvelous", because of his reputation as a dandy who wears ostentatious, ornate clothing and is popular with women. Rialto is ordinarily agreeable and carefree, but his fellow wizards regard him as somewhat supercilious. Ildefons is the elected preceptor of the compact, he is invested with broad powers and effectively acts as a chairman and mediator of the compact's meetings and members. Although he is prone to hedonism and squabbling like his fellow wizards, he is generally much more temperate and level headed than the others. His ordinary appearance is of a portly, bald middle-aged man with blue eyes and blonde whiskers, which he habitually tugs at when vexed. Rialto maintains a closer friendship with him than with any of the other wizards. His manse, a four-towered castle named Boomergarth, sits next to the river Scorm. Hour of the Opals. Saturnine, with a pointed black beard and a caustic manner. Barbanikos, short and squat with a great puff of white hair. Byzant the Necrope. Darvilk the Meantha, who wears a black domino mask for unknown reasons. Dulce Lolo, a portly epicure. Eshmiel, who delightfully affects an appearance which is, from head to toe, half white and half black, split vertically down the center. His home and possessions are similarly colored. Gilgad, known for his clammy touch and his clothing, which is always rose red. Hash Monker, a vindictive wizard who is jealous of Rialto's manor, and sets out to destroy Rialto's position due to a perceived slight on Rialto's part. He wears the appearance of a nature god with fine features and bronze curls. Haze of Weary Water Haze appears as a wisp, an aquatic humanoid with green skin and orange willow leaves for hair. Whether this is his true appearance, or just a magical affectation, is unknown. Herrick the Harbinger Hershinch, short and burly, notorious for his short temper and irritability. He wears false teeth made from carved rubies. Moreron, an exceptionally powerful amnesiac wizard who spent eons trapped far from Earth. Unlike most wizards, he eschews spells for simple gestures powered by personal force. Mune the mage, who speaks little, unlike the other wizards, he is married, having four spouses. Nahorezen, a scholar from Old Ramath, a planet which appears in some of Vance's other works. Pandaleu, whose passion is collecting rare and exotic artifacts from many dimensions. Perdustin, an especially secretive mage. He has no real friends, and refuses to reveal his place of residence. Shrew, a diabolist. Thin and pale, he is a scholar of the demon realms, and his fellow wizards find him agreeable but his witticisms disturbing. Chamist. In sharp contrast to the other wizards of the compact, Chamist is a morose ascetic who is extremely mistrustful of women, so much that he only allows male insects into his home. Teutsch, who rarely speaks with his mouth, but uses magic to flick words from his fingertips. He is an elder of the Hub, a philosophical academy which Kugel encountered on his own journeys, which holds that reality is like a wheel with an uncertain number of infinities as its «spokes». As an elder, he is accorded control over a «private infinity». Vermilion the Dream Walker, described as «peculiarly tall and thin, with a stately stride». Vermilion lives in a magnificent floating palace which can travel to the far corners of the known universe, and can also view, enter, and record the dreams of others. He has a collection of «recordings» of beautiful women from ages past, stored in bottles. 
The women can be brought to life for a time, but once dismissed and recalled, they reappear with no memory of their last manifestation. Zahulik Kuntza, known for his iron fingernails and toenails which are inscribed with strange runes. Zanzil Melanchthones, who is friendly with Rialto and Ildefonse. Zilifant, robust of body, with long brown hair and a flowing beard. Quote, 